late 60s when a real estate development company in Charlotte County cast its sights northward. Punta Gorda Isles, primarily a waterfront developer, needed more land. Suitable waterfront property was growing scarce and very expensive. Company executives asked one of its employees, Jim Sanders, to explore the state. A large piece of property in southern Citrus and northern Hernando County was available. Its owner was looking for a developer. The Norin Company, known locally as the Norris Cattle Company, approached Pentagona Isles and Sugar Mill Woods was born out of what was known as the Twin County Ranch. In 1972, Jim Sanders moved his family to Citrus County and the work began. Sanders headed the project and became an early resident. Forty years later, he is its best historian. Early in the planning, a name was created and a logo was developed. Sugar Mill Woods, it's called Sugar Mill. This obviously was the inspiration, the Sugar Mill. Mm -hmm. Why this? This little park uh, centered around uh, uh, the Yuli Sugar Mill was something that was well known and in fact some of the restaurants are already named after it so we decided that uh, we wanted to make this mill the old mill part of our logo and uh, so that's what we came down and took many pictures of this and and uh, and uh, the next question was uh, what are we going to do with it when because it's sugar mill wood, so we had to have a tree. So we set out to do that. Is that tree still alive? And that tree still alive. Can we go find it? And we'll go find it. <laughs> when we were going down the trail, it was on our right over here. And it was kind of hard to find because it was covered up with these small sand pines. All right, now when you came here, it didn't look like this with all this woods. No, 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 no. 6,500 acres approximately was open pasture. Wow. Because remember, uh, the uh, owner before us was Norris Cattle Company, mm -hmm. and they were trying to raise cattle on this property. So out of the 15,400 acres, 6,500 of it was open pasture. And uh, we planted Decided, you know, we couldn't sell property that was barren, no trees, so we uh, uh, went ahead and planted. I uh, got a fellow to help me, of course. Uh, One million two hundred thousand pine seedlings. Wow. Of slash pine, you can see the woods here, and slash pine, a, a mixture of the two. So you uh, hired a farmer yeah. to come and plant all those seedlings? Yeah, I found a farmer in, uh, in Dunnell. And he had not much to do that winter. You always plant pine trees when they're dormant uh -huh. in the winter time. So he didn't have much to do that winter. So he came over with his equipment and we rented the tree plant machines from the forestry department. Bought all the little seedlings, which are, you know, when you plant them, they're only like 18 inches, including the root. And he worked for the entire winter you know, like uh, December, January, February, and planted 1.2 million trees. Uh, when we came here in 1989, yeah. there were big billboards <laughs> entering Citrus County that said Sugar Mill Woods, yeah. one million trees. Yeah. <laughs> big billboards. Well, that, they, they, they were there. They were here. That was part of the attraction for us trees. to come here. 1.2 million, yep. So. In 1972, uh -huh. you laid eyes on this place for the first time. Right. I assume it did not look like this. Oh, no, no, no. It was barren? Yes, lots of, uh, over here where you see these pine trees, that's, that was all open pasture. Uh, from here, we're in, we're, in a, we're in Palm Village, or what would have been Palm Village. And from here down to 480, which is this direction, mm -hmm was nothing but open pasture. Huh. That's all. But then? Then we planted those trees I mentioned to you, 1.2 million. Yep. But then, when you were standing on 480 down there, there was something up here. Yep. 
Well, kind of like a sentinel. This was wide open, so we saw this tree south of 480 that would fit the bill, that we could fit it with the, uh, the mill, and it would work out just right for the logo. And that's it. And that's it. That's the tree. There's the tree. That's the tree. It's grown some. It's grown some since we filmed it or shot it, the picture of it, but that's her. All that around it wasn't there it wasn't originally. There. It was barren. Yep. Talk to me about Punta Gorda Isles. Now it was south of here, Charlotte County, I believe, and primarily involved in developing waterfront. Really nice property, upscale. Why would you come to this area where it's, there's no water, at least within eight miles of the Gulf? Well, uh, along about that time in the uh, er, late 60s, early 70s, uh, we began to uh, think about inventory. What are we gonna do when we run out of inventory in Charlotte County, in Charlotte and Lee County, rather? And uh, that's when we really started looking and one of my assignments, along with Bud Cole, who was president of the company of Ponte Gorda Isles, uh, the two of us were flying all over the state of Florida looking for property. But actually it was the, the Norrin people, or the Norris Cattle Company people that contacted us. And they had all this property and uh, the attraction, they owned the attraction at the time, they were... That, the attraction being the wildlife park? The wildlife park. We, we know it as the wildlife park. But they, they all had all this land and they had no expertise within their troops, so to speak. Expertise in de developing and marketing and selling property. What was the attraction to Punta Gorda? I mean, this is a vast... They, they really, they wanted to find uh, a, what is commonly known in the industry as a white hat developer. Now, let's Somebody that, that had a good reputation of, of uh, treating people right and, and telling the true story and so on, and they found us. I assume the white hat developer is in contrast to those people who were selling swamp land. Exactly. And what have you. <laughs> that would be, that's a very good that's it. That's it. They, there, there were people still, even in those days, that were trying to sell swamp land. But that began. The laws began to be passed in the state of Florida that put a stop to that. Now, when you came here in the, I guess, early '70s, late '60s, Citrus County was a very small county. True. Population was. Oh, twenty thousand or less. <laughs> Somewhere in that neighborhood. What was the reaction to from the officials of Citrus County when this big firm came in and, and wanted to do work its magic here? Well, they had had some experience with the Deltona Corporation and, and Citrus Springs, but it was not an easy task to get going because back then uh, the county commissioners were all pretty much hometown boys. And you know what I mean by hometown boys. And, mm -hmm. and it was a, a real easy task to get things done. But I was a cracker boy, born and raised in Florida. And, and all of them were native Floridians. Did have a common thread. We did have a common thread. And that worked to my advantage and as we moved along. Citrus County had no zoning codes, no building codes. You just had to operate according to the Florida uh, Southern Building Code. Uh, uh, and and uh, so, you know, that, that really makes it tough because I had, I had always been used to going into an area where they were established. We could go to the courthouse, so to speak, and say, I want to buy a copy of the developer's Bible, <laughs> lowercase. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, uh, but this Citrus County had nothing like that. Mm -hmm. 